Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys doing this evening? It is really late, you guys. It is 5.07 a.m. And I woke up like an hour ago. And I was just like reading comments from the vlog. <laughs> I was sitting at the dining room table just sitting there reading comments from the vlog. And before I knew it, it was like 10 till five. And I was like, I need to vlog because everybody wants hour long vlogs. <laughs> everybody wants hour long vlogs, which means if I go vlog now, I'm not gonna get home till 6 a.m. And uh, which has kind of become my bedtime, it seems like. Well, not really because I go to bed about 11 with Alex and then I wake up because the dogs wake me up to take them out. So I take them out. It actually kind of works well. And then I take the dogs out um, and then I go vlog. And by the time I get home, I'm so tired. Well, sometimes I'm like hungry and I need a little snack. <laughs> which is not good, which is not good at all. But last night, I actually, because I wanted to get back into the routine of um, doing like my nighttime facial ritual, I did all of that last night and um, washed my face and then I used this Kiehl's under eye cream and then I used this, um, what do you call it? This, it's like this watermelon hydrating face mask. I don't know the brand. It's like this pink consistency, color, pink color consistency. Um, it's really nice. The bottle is very heavy. I was thinking about that because I was like, I need to find a hydrating face mask for like when we go on vacation to warm places, like when I'm on the beach during the day and stuff that I can put on my face at night. But the bottle isn't so heavy because when you, you know, go on trips, it's like you don't want to pack super heavy stuff, you know? So I was thinking about that and I don't know. Oh, uh, well I've taken those little Neutrogena things in the past. Those work pretty well. Um, I think I took those when I went to LA. Oh, I did take those when I went to LA because remember I ended up using one, I think on my hand when I got burnt. You guys know that, remember if you've watched my vlog for this long, I don't know if you can still see it, but I got burnt a year ago from coffee do you see, I still have the burn there. Isn't that crazy? I got burnt by a cup of coffee when I was at a meeting. I like took the coffee, I had the coffee cup in my hand and I went to go lick like the side of the cup or something. I can't remember what I did, but the coffee like spilled onto my hand and it was so hot. So the meeting that I go to on Tuesday nights, we have these big like, you know, um, metal coffee makers. We have one for decaf and one for regular. And this is so funny because I was just reading um, somebody's comment. I don't want to say her name just in case. I don't know. She, her comment's there so you can find it if you wanted to. But she said that her dad had been sober for 35 years and he still goes to a meeting every Tuesday, which I think is so cool. And I know so many people like that. And um, she said she actually tried coffee for the first time at a meeting. I loved that. I don't know why I loved that. I just... Um, I've talked about this on here before. There's like something about drinking coffee at a meeting. There's just something very spiritual about the whole being at a meeting. And, um, well, I mean, at least for me, that's my experience. I know a lot of people, you know, haven't had similar experiences with it, but for me. But anyway, I spilled the coffee on my hand and I burnt my, I burnt my hand. And that was a year ago. That was almost a year ago because it was before I went to LA the first time. And the first time I went to LA was in January, I think. So it's been almost exactly a year and I still have this burn on my hand. I probably will have it forever, is what I'm thinking at this point. It's like a scar. So anyway, today, how was today? Today was a good day. How was your day? I just got done reading all of the, you guys are so nice to me. I mean, you just are like so unbelievably nice. So many people were talking about how they like my voice and they find my voice soothing. And then so many people were requesting longer vlogs because they like to watch them before they go to bed or listen to them. Um, 
one person said something, I get this comment every once in a while, and I don't really think about it this way, but it's interesting. Somebody said something about that I'm, like, I'm doing a new thing in vlogging, and even though I don't have a lot of subscribers or whatever, you know, the fact that, like, I vlog for an hour every single day, and I have for several years now, is, like, kind of a different thing within, like, the vlogging, you know, community, and, um... I like that, that I'm doing something different, you know? Um, but there are other vloggers out there that vlog for long periods of time during the day. You know, it's interesting whenever I talk to people, they'll be like, like, these are some of the comments that YouTubers say to me. Like, YouTubers will say, have you ever thought about just getting rid of your other four channels and focusing just on your drama channel? Because if you did, you could put out, you know, like, I mean, I've gotten this comment from so many YouTubers. They'll say, if you did that, you know, you could focus on putting out better content on your drama channel, you know, and really focusing the attention on that channel. And it's like, well, that's the first comment that I get. And the second comment that I get, you know, is um, that a lot of people that are vloggers will say to me, you don't have to do an hour, you know, like, or more, like, I don't know why you do that. They'll say, why don't you just do 10 or 15 minutes and just capture certain parts of the day? And I think it's because what I do is so completely different on here, you know, and I don't think they really get that sometimes, you know, that for me, it's not about like showing what I'm doing throughout the day. It's more about just kind of having a one-sided discussion, you know? Um, and it's, it is very much like, call it a, you know, a radio show, call it a podcast, call it you know, I, just me talking. I mean, whatever, you know, it's just, I, I enjoy it. I have a good time and it's, um, it's really cathartic for me because I'm telling these stories and, you know, like, it's like the people in my life have heard these stories time and time again. And, you know, even you guys have heard some of these stories time and time again and are probably tired of them, you know? Um, but every time, like, I retell a story, I think there's probably one person out there that hasn't heard it before, which is why I retell it, you know? I like to relive certain parts of my life as well. Um, even, you know, when that makes me emotional or sad or reflective, I like to kind of, like, look back on that, you know? But the thing about having five different channels and, and why it works for me personally, I'm not saying that I think it's the greatest business move in the world, but I don't really think much from a business point of view. I think if there's one downfall... Well, many, but like, let's just say one is like a businessman on YouTube. If I have, if I have a few, it's, I don't really think from a business point of view with what I do on YouTube. Like, I, I really don't. Like, I don't think about it from, I, I'm not saying that I don't see it as a business or I don't like, you know, enjoy the money that I make off of it or the ads and all that kind of stuff because that's, you know, what, that goes without saying. What I'm saying is, I don't think about it. Like, you know, I've been meaning for like six months to redo my merch. People are always like, you, like, you should have merch, you should have merch. I have merch. It's listed underneath the video that you're looking at right now. I, I've had merch for a year and a half now. And, um, some of the merch I went in and I took out a lot of, and a lot of the merch I replaced, but I've had merch underneath there for a long time. Just nobody buys it. I think it's because nobody knows it's under there. But I've been meaning to redo it for, you know, a long time. And because, like, people will say, oh, I wish you that you had a, uh, a shirt that said drama class. And I'm like, well, I do. <laughs> or people will say, I wish that you had a sweatshirt that had, like, your picture on it. Well, I do. <laughs> you know, it's like, I even have a PP the Flying Chihuahua sweatshirt over there in the hoodie, you know. And um, I'm just not good about pushing that stuff. You know, I'm not good about, like, I, I'm really, you guys, like, I have such a hard time just, I enjoy the... I enjoy the creativity of making the videos that the rest of it, I struggle with really hard. Like, the responding to the comments. Like, I read the comments, but it's, like, it takes a long time for me to go through five, four videos, five videos a day. You know, yesterday I was in such a crunch, or today I was in such a crunch to get videos done and get ready to go to our meeting tonight. And I still put up my vlog, a review video, and a drama video. And then I literally was running out the door, so I don't know when I would have, like, responded to comments after that. I and, mean, like, yesterday, I put up two, two drama videos, a Peterisms video, 
a review video in my vlog. So I put five videos up yesterday. It's hard for me to like keep up with the comments on all of those channels. And at some point, it just kind of went over to the point where I wasn't like it, I just couldn't keep up with the comments. I like to go in there every once in a while and respond to comments, but it's just really, it's easy for me to read them, but it's, it takes, you know, time to like go in and I feel bad, you know, about that, but, and emails are the same way and like, you know, like, I'll go through my emails and I'll, like somebody will have offered me like a sponsorship and it'll even be like a company that, um, like I really believe in, you know? And then I'll respond to them because the email will have been from like two weeks ago. And I'll be like, yeah, I'm really interested in doing this sponsorship with you, you know, whatever, here's my idea. And they'll be like, well, we've, you know, gone a different direction and the money that we had, we've not like allocated somewhere else. And I like miss these opportunities because I'm not great, you know? And I just don't think about it as like a, like a business. It's not for me like, Maybe I need to think more that way, you know? I don't know. But I also really enjoy what I do, and that doesn't take away from it, you know? I just feel really blessed to, you know, be able to get on video and that somebody wants to watch it or listen to it, like, it means a lot to me. Um, and I can't say that enough. But anyway, how was your day today? Mine was good. Tell you how, I, what I did. I didn't do a whole lot. Um, I stayed up super late last night watching Dragula. <laughs> I can't remember who it was. It's like, oh, her name starts with a C-H. Okay, okay, I need to give a shout out really quick. Hold on a second, because I promised that I would give this shout out like two weeks ago. Well, not two weeks ago, but like a week and a half ago. And in all honesty, I completely forgot. So I want to make sure that I give this shout out. This is a birthday shout out, hold on. Um. Okay, I want to give a shout out to, hold on, let me get out of my, I just left it on there on the pictures. I screenshotted the message. I want to give a shout out to Darby, Robbie's mom. <clears throat> Darby, happy birthday to you. Happy belated birthday, Darby. <laughs> Darby is the mother of the booktuber Robbie Reads, and he reached out to me um, and asked me to give his mom a happy birthday. So, Darby, happy birthday. I hope you have um, a fantastic... Well, you already had it. <laughs> so, forget it then, I guess. No, I hope you had a fantastic birthday. I hope it was really, really good. My husband celebrates uh, his birthday like for an entire month, which is also my month of my birthday, so. Well, he used to. He doesn't really as much as anymore as he used to, but he used to get so excited about it. And he'd be like, well, this weekend we're gonna do this, and this weekend we're gonna do that, and then it's just like his birthday month, you know? Do you know people that do that? But Alex used to get so excited about that. He doesn't get as excited about it anymore. You know, Halloween either, like. I mean, he gets excited about it, but. Like, he used to plan his costumes out months in advance. He never does that anymore. And, uh... He's growing up, too, you know? It's like... Alex is, uh... Gonna be 36 this year. Alex is going to be the age that I was when we met this year. And it's surreal to think about the fact that like at that age I had, my mom had passed and how different my life looked before that, you know? 
and now we talk about just liking to travel for our birthdays when before he always wanted to have some blowout birthday party you know with a ton of people and do a dinner and a club and all this kind of stuff but he doesn't really like to do that kind of I mean he does like to do that but that's not the focus you know We're wanting to go somewhere for our birthdays this year, but we don't know where we want to go. That's actually, because both of our birthdays are in June, it's actually kind of a cheap month to travel somewhere like the Caribbean. So that's probably what we'll do. Because we've been to Mexico, we've been to the Dominican Republic, but we haven't gone to like an island. An island. We have some friends of ours, they love St. John. They're there right now. I think they have their honeymoon there and they go there like twice a year. They love St. John. So, I would like to kind of go some... I would love to go to Grand Cayman. Um, that's been one of my favorite places I've ever gone in my entire life. Some of my favorite places that I've ever traveled in my entire life. Well, Gatlinburg, Tennessee, that goes without saying. Uh, in the United States, Gatlinburg. Um, it's so pretty. And... Um, Gatlinburg, Las Vegas, Las Vegas, <laughs> um, Miami. Those are probably my three favorite places. <laughs> I was thinking about Los Angeles the other day. If I had a reason to go out there, I would probably go out there again. I had a good time going out there. Um, and it wasn't super expensive to go out there for just like two or three nights. <laughs> I would do that again. But I don't really have a reason to go out there right now. But I think those are my three favorite cities in the United States. I think places I've traveled to that are my all-time favorites. Um, I wouldn't say the Dominican Republic. The first time I went with my ex, it was beautiful. And the beach was beautiful and everything, but this last time it just was not. We had a great trip and it was so fun meeting those people, those other couples that we hung out with like the last two nights. That was so much fun. Um, and that trip and the time before that we went to Mexico that we kind of like hung out and met some people, like that really opened up a new way for us to travel that like when we go somewhere, we really like want to meet another couple or you know like hang out with a couple other couples and whatever and that's really fun and the first time that we went to Un Unico I don't know if that was the first time or the second time I think it was the first time we met a couple from they were from Texas and they had been like married the same amount of time we had and they had kids and stuff like that and then we also met um, there were a lot of like British people there. We met like this British couple that that were engaged. They were going to get engaged, and then we met um, this mom and her daughter and her daughter's best friend. And that was like the first time that we went. And then like the second time that we went, we didn't really like when we went to the Dominican Republic and we met those people like on the boat that day trip. Like that was so good for us. And that was so much fun. And it was kind of very much like you meet somebody and you guys are like instant friends and you have all like these inside personal jokes and stuff. Like that's what that was. That was so much fun. Um, we're like all of us like friends on Facebook and I like see that like the, some of them will come up every once in a while and I'm like, God, that's so funny. That was like so long ago, you know? And, um,. That was such a fun trip. But, so I love Mexico, and I, but the Dominican Republic, I wouldn't say is one of my favorite places, but Playa del Carmen, I love. But like favorite, favorite trips I've taken, um, Grand Cayman <clears throat> was one of my all time favorite places. And I think I went there 
So my very my first boyfriend and I started well my first like legit boyfriend. I mean I had boyfriends here and there that I dated for like a month, but sober. Like my real boyfriend. Like I mean I dated a guy like for two months and that Todd guy that passed away, I, I dated him for like two months. But then that October, I started dating my first boyfriend, and he and I were together five and a half years, and we traveled a lot with my dad and my stepmom. Like, we traveled a lot. <laughs> I remember this one time, we um, stayed at the JW Marriott in Cancun, and I remember he and I were so bitter because we both, like, the room that we got, like, they were full. I think it was, like, a spring break time. And we were there with my dad and my stepmom. And they had, like, gotten, like, a suite, like, on the ground floor overlooking the ocean. And we were, like, in just in a regular room. And um, we were, like, we got, they gave us two double beds. And we wanted, like, one king-size bed, you know? And my dad was like, oh, I'm sorry. And he was, like, trying to get it to be able to move it and whatever. And they were like, there was no way to move it. And we were like, that's cool, whatever. We're just so thankful to be here and stuff. But we were kind of like, I can't believe that we don't have a king-size bed and whatever. And so we were thinking about, like, pushing the beds together. It was stupid. Like, we couldn't sleep. Both of us were thin then, too, that we couldn't have slept in this, you know, one double bed together. And, um... But anyway, the first day we got so like insanely burnt that we like came back and I remember we were like laying there in boxer shorts and he was on one bed and I was on the other bed and we were like just like this and we were like don't touch each other we didn't like didn't want to be we didn't want each other to touch each other because we were so burnt and so in pain and we were so thankful that we had two separate beds where we wouldn't touch the other person because we were like so in pain that we were gonna get like hurt. But anyway, um that was a, we did that. We did Cancun with my dad and my stepmom a couple times. Um, we took some really nice trips to Cancun. Um, and then we did Grand Cayman. And I think Grand Cayman, that was, that might have been the first trip that we all took together. And so that would be like coming up on well, no, it would have been more like 24 years, 23 years ago. Um, and we stayed at, I think we stayed at, we didn't stay at like the, the nicest place in the entire world, but it was nice. And we stayed at the Marriott and it was at the very end. And I heard now like they really have no beach because the hurricanes have destroyed a lot of the beach and Grand Cayman is what I've heard. Um, I would love to go there. But it is so expensive to fly to Grand Cayman. It's expensive to stay there. Um, everything about it is expensive. But I do remember like, he and I would like walk into town and there was like this little town that was like three blocks away and they had these cute little restaurants and um, that was just, the beach was beautiful and I can remember we literally would just walk up and down the beach for hours every day. That seven mile beach, it's just gorgeous. And you would literally like be walking down the beach and like 10 feet out, I mean, I'm no lie, 10, 20 feet out, dolphins would be like, uh, like, you know, what do you call it? Like flipping through the water. I mean, it's crystal clear water for like a mile out. It's absolutely gorgeous. And I don't know if it's different than that today. I don't know if it's changed, you know, because of the hurricanes and stuff I've heard that it has. Um, but it's just, it's, it's beautiful. Oh, it's gonna stop, hold on. Funny story, the Christmas before I graduated, my dad got me a, there was this Tag Heuer watch that I really, really wanted. I had wanted it forever. And it was the one that has like the things like this. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? And I really wanted that watch and my dad got it for me. I kind of would like to look at a, a nice watch again. I mean, I have some fun watches, but I would like to look at like a nice, nice watch for myself. Maybe I'll do that um, for my sobriety birthday. But um, my dad got me that watch. Well, I lost it. I mean, I literally wore that watch all the time. And I lost it when I was in um, Grand Cayman in the water snorkeling. And it was like hours later or the next day or something. I can't remember. But it was like I found it. I found it like by the reef. And I was like, I mean, I panicked when I lost it. And I remember I found it. And I was like, oh, my God, I'm going to write to Tag Heuer. And they're going to just like, you know, give me a, uh, they're going to give me free Tag Heuer watches for the rest of my life. That, I didn't even write them, I don't think. But that was so funny. I found that watch. 
I kept that watch for such a long time. I wore it for years and years and years. <laughs> you know, I don't think that, like, people wear watches as much anymore. Well, I, I think this is changing again. There was, like, a long period where I feel like people didn't wear watches because, you know, we have our phones, and so um, people don't, like, really wear watches and stuff. But, like, when I was growing up... Like, that was such a rite of passage for, like, my dad to buy me, like, a really nice watch. Like, I feel like for a lot of people, you know, like, like, my dad said something to me when he gave it to me that, like, when he went to college, like, his parents bought him, like, a really nice, like, Timex watch or something, you know, and, um, I can't remember my dad, now, my dad has a really nice watch today, like, my dad, I think my stepmom got it for him for like maybe his 70th birthday or something. But my dad has a pretty extravagant watch today. But he, uh, and just deservedly so, my dad works his ass off. But he, um, I remember one time I had a really, I can't remember what watch it was. I've always loved watches and I had a really nice watch. And my dad, who, like, I swear to God, his entire life wore a Timex, he looked at his watch and he goes, What time do you have? And I was like, I don't, Let's just say it was two o'clock. And I said, Two o'clock. And he goes, Yeah. My watch says the same thing. <laughs> He'd always give me a hard time because, like, when I was growing up, I liked nice things. I liked, like, high-end things. Um, my dad gave me this uh, Louis Vuitton bag when I was, like, I really wanted, like, a Louis Vuitton duffel bag for going out of town and stuff because we traveled a lot. And I was probably, at the time, I didn't even realize what a big deal it was back because back then it wasn't as it is much as it is now I don't think but I was probably 18 it might have been that same Christmas I don't know but anyway we were at my dad's house a couple years ago I haven't hadn't seen that bag in years I didn't know where it was and I was like do I still have that Louis Vuitton bag around here somewhere and my stepmom was like if you do it's up in the closet because they have like this closet where they keep like all their luggage and stuff and skis and like anything that you would need to travel and so, like, I saw, like, Alex's eyes light up. And I go, well, if I can find it, I'll just give it to you. So, I found my Louis Vuitton backpack. Or, uh, ba it's, like, this big. I mean, it's pretty big. Um, duffel bag. Um, which now would probably be considered vintage. <laughs> anyway, I gave it to Alex. He uses it now. Every trip we take, he takes it. It's held up, I'll say that. All these years, it's held up. It still looks like brand new. Every time I like, I like, I just don't care about that stuff. I will say this, like the North Face little mini backpack that I bought, okay, if you're looking for like a gift for somebody, like I'm gonna do some of these videos on my review channel, but like some great gifts for people. First of all, if you're looking for a gift for your husband or uh, father or boyfriend or whatever, or I don't know, but wife or a girlfriend or whatever, if they like this, the art of shaving, I just bought peppermint. They have like, and it comes in this container, right? It's $30, but it lasts forever. Um, the art of shaving um, has peppermint shaving cream out. And you guys, it is fan. Fantastic. I love it. I swear by it. Okay. The other thing is, it's very wintry too, so like it wouldn't have to just be for Christmas, but I will tell you that like the the uh, the label has like peppermint sticks or something on it. The other thing is if you have like um you know somebody that like travels a lot and when they travel they go to the beach or they go to the pool or they just like walk around town for the day or whatever. That mini North Face backpack that I got, I, I didn't think I would get any use out of it because I was like, how am I going to carry this? But the entire time that we were in San Diego, I used that backpack. I was like, this, this backpack is a lifesaver. You can take it to the pool. You can take it anywhere. It is, it, you know, really, really, a, it is worth it. And I think it was like $45 because I used the gift card that I had from Carlos and Liliana, but I think it was like $45. 
it is totally worth it, that little mini backpack. That would be a great gift too for somebody that travels a lot. I will also say this, and this is not a sponsored video, but I wish it was. That Scentbird subscription service thing, and I know a lot of people have issues with it, but when you travel and you wanna take cologne with you, like that is a fantastic way to take cologne because those little vials that it comes in, like if you just saved those just for traveling, um, like you would get your money's worth out of it. Cause I took a Burberry one to Miami and I used it like all up while I was down there. I need to get another bottle of Creed. Well, I don't need to. I want to get another bottle of Creed. But I'm really trying to hold out as long as I can because <laughs> it's so expensive. But I also want to buy a smaller bottle um, to see that I can, like, travel with. But I don't know what the smallest size is that you can, like, buy of it. And I don't know if, like, they have atomizers because it's, like, a spray bottle. I'm gonna pull in here and look. Does anybody out there wear Joe Malone? The cologne Joe, the perfume or the cologne? Do you like it? Do you not like it? I saw it at Saks and there's one I really like and it's really not super expensive. I was kind of surprised. I think it's the Oud something, tobacco Oud or whatever. Um, Okay, let's see, because they have it at Saks. Let's see what size bottles they have. Here it is. So, oh my God, you guys, it goes up to $1,055 for 16.9 ounces. Okay, we don't need all that. That is so expensive. But what is 1.7 ounces? I wish I had smaller bottles than that. Can you travel with 1.7 ounces? Does anybody know if you can travel with 1.7 ounces? If you know, would you let me know? When it comes to perfumes and colognes, like what can you, well, I guess it doesn't matter because you can, um, like if I'm not taking a carry on, if I'm actually packing, packing a bag, I do know something that I want to look up, though. I'm going to look up this fan. I need to start buying my Christmas presents, is what I need to do for people. I bought two subscription boxes that I'm going to be reviewing on my review channel today, but I found this one, and it's called, it's succulents. So you get two little succulents once a month, turns out heaven is a place on earth. Isn't that so cute? I might review that. We'll see. Um, <laughs> we'll see. Okay. Give me just a second. Because, like, we'll give you all the time in the world if you want. That trip to Miami at the Fountain Blue was so much fun. Dream. I want to go back to Miami. I wish we had a place down there now that we could just go down there whenever we wanted. Unfortunately, that's not the case. But one of these days, one of these days that will be the case. I thought I took a picture
but I guess I didn't. Hmm. Peter, why do you always think that you do stuff that you don't? <laughs> Oh well. I was feeling rather Christmassy earlier, and then I came outside, and our neighbors have all these Christmas lights up. And I was thinking to myself, I haven't even. I bought these little sparkling, you know, like the little white Christmas lights. I guess they can be multicolored too. But I was like, I haven't even put them on my little tree out there yet, and I haven't put up my Christmas tree yet. And I was like, all before you know it, it's going to be two weeks into December, and I won't have done any of this stuff, and then I'll be real sad about it, you know, because I'll be like, oh, I didn't do this stuff again. So I need to break out my Christmas tree and do all this kind of stuff. I get so busy throughout the day, and it's like time just goes by, and... I need better time management skills. I was actually taking some notes about that before I left to come vlogging tonight. And I was like, I need to do this and I need to do that. I need to organize some things going forward into January. But see, part of the problem is I lived so structured for so long that it's kind of nice to live a little, um, I just got really thirsty for one of those Mountain Dew mango mashups. But it's really nice to live kind of free-spirited and just kind of be like, okay, well, this is what I'm going to do today or this is what I'm going to do today, you know? You know what I mean, Jelly Bean? thinking the other day if I won like the lottery like a huge lottery you know like 200 million dollars or something and I was like well, how would that change my life like I, we would definitely buy a place in Florida and go back and forth but we would take the dogs with us you know but the thing is other than that I don't think it really would change our life a whole lot like I would redo our house exactly the way that we want it and I honestly would just hire a contractor and be like this is what we want do it and we're gonna go check into a hotel for a month that's what I would do um, but other than that I don't think it would really change my life a whole lot you know um, I mean we don't really want for a lot nobody in our life really wants for a lot you know it's like everybody pretty much has everything they need or want I mean we are so blessed I mean, we would travel, but, like, in all honesty, I wouldn't... Like, we tr we're traveling a lot in 2020. Like, we have a lot of trips planned. And, um... I mean, we were talking about... We also need to go back to Miami in April. And then, um... Which, that's a trip that we don't have planned. Um... But for all of the people that are like, I really want to meet you when you come to Dallas, so many people have reached out to me and I really, really appreciate it. Um, but I don't know like how long we're going to be there. If I, if I do some kind of like, I'm, it's so embarrassing. I don't know why it's embarrassing. Like when people are like, do a meetup, do a meetup. I'm like, it's embarrassing that I even think that anybody would want to come. I don't know why. It's just like, that's. It just feels kind of arrogant, honestly, to think like, okay, I'm having a meetup. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know why I feel that way, but I just do. But if I do do that, um, it's probably going to be like somewhere out because we're literally going to be there two nights, you guys. We're going to be there Friday and Saturday night. So Friday night we have the wedding and then we're probably going to meet up with this friend and go out. And then Saturday night we will probably low key it because we're flying back Sunday. So it's like, that is literally our trip. Like we're gonna fly, and I told Alex tonight, I said, I think that maybe we need to do Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And he was like, why? And I said, because I can never sleep the night before we travel. And I said, I will be exhausted that Friday and we have the wedding and I don't wanna be exhausted for the wedding. Like I wanna enjoy it. So we're gonna have to look at it and see. Um, but yeah. 
And if you live in Dallas and you have some hotels that you think are just absolutely fantastic that we should stay at, let us know. Our friend that lives out there, he gave us a couple suggestions of really cool. We're going to probably stay in downtown Dallas. The wedding is actually like 40 minutes away, but we're, um, I think it's like in a residential area, but we're going to, um, be stay I think we're going to stay in downtown Dallas just because that would be fun and we haven't been and, you know, whatever. So we have like our New Year's trip and then Dallas and then Miami in March and then Miami in April and then Las Vegas in May and then our birthday trip in June which we have no idea where we're doing that yet and then July, August we'll probably just do one trip and I'm thinking we'll either do Las Vegas for our anniversary or I kind of think it'd be fun to go back to San Diego for our anniversary so we'll do probably, because San Diego at that time might not be too expensive. We had such a great time in San Diego with Fufu and his girlfriend, Jesse. So we'll probably either do Las Vegas or San Diego. And then I definitely want to get out to visit Susie at some point this year. And I also want to get out and I want to visit Mel sometime this year. Those are like my two must-haves. And, um... And I ask Alex if he wants to do those, and he wants to do both of those. So, that'll be Arizona and Colorado. I mean, we have like 10 trips we're taking this year. On top of like wanting to redo our house, and um, it was so funny because somebody commented on my vlog, and they said that their friend works for American Airlines, and their friend said that the cheapest time to book flights is midnight on Tuesday nights. Well, I knew Tuesday nights were like the cheapest night. I don't know how I knew that, but like I've like looked a lot on lines and Tuesday nights are always like the cheapest nights to like book flights. But thank you for that information. Um, Cause we're always like trying to find like, you know, cheap stuff to do whatever. So, um, but yeah, we have a lot of exciting stuff to look forward to going into 2020. A lot of traveling that will be really fun and I'm really excited about that. Do you ever want something to drink but you don't want to like stop? <laughs> That's where I'm at right now. Like I really want to get one of those Mountain Dew mashups. But I don't need it. I have my water right here. I've almost all of my water's almost gone. Somebody sent me this. I don't know who, but I love it. I have like five of these. It's fun to have stuff to look forward to. You know, it's interesting because I said, uh, like a couple years ago, I said, Alex, I said, <clears throat> I think we need to start having trips planned like every three months to look forward to. And now it's crazy that we literally have trips like every month that we're planning and looking forward to. And I just do so much better when I have that, you know? Um, Somebody said something on the vlog about, or in the comments, about they couldn't travel that much because their dogs wouldn't like it. I think I have more of an issue with leaving than our dogs do. Now, Tucker and Boo Radley, I, I like always joke with Boo Radley, and he's like, oh, I don't need to go. You can just leave me at the house. I'll be just fine right here. But, like, Tucker loves being at the kennel. Like, as soon as he gets there, he's like, oh, like, before I'm even gone, he's, like, running up and down the lead, like, barking at the other dogs. He loves it, right? And Boo Radley just runs after Tucker. So, I don't even know that Boo Radley really knows what's going on a whole lot. But he has fun. And PB just hangs out with Tanya the whole time. And then she makes hit her office into, like, a little bed for him. She puts it next to the fireplace. And so, he has, like, this big bed there. And I think he likes it. I'm... I have more of a problem leaving them than I think they have a problem being left, in all honesty. Because... I always worry about PP's health. And now with Boo and Tucker getting older, I worry about their health as well too, but they're, they seem so healthy right now, you know? Um, but 
but I worry about, you know, PP's health. And especially like going farther away like if we're going to Miami, you know Like if Tanya called me and said, you know, like he's not doing well like I would be on the next fl the flight home but If we go somewhere like out of the country like it's hard for that to happen, which is why um, I, I'm not willing to take a trip to like Thailand or Bora Bora or Hawaii or something like that I'm not willing to do that until PP has gone. I'm just not and I know that people probably think that's stupid and I don't really care. Um, but. You know, there's going to be the day that PB is not doing well and he's not going to make it. And that's. Unless it happens in the middle of the night or while one of us is gone during the day. I do not want the dog to be alone when that happens. I mean we've been his entire life, you know? Alex had PP for two years before me, and, um, you know, now the dog is 13 years old, 13 and a half years old, and so, I mean, I've known him for 11 and a half years, and he literally, he and I all day long are just, we pal around, we sleep next to each other, I mean, we wake up next to each other. He's my best friend, you know? And, um, I can't, I can't start thinking about it. I'm going to be a mess when something happens to him. But, you know, like, I mean, dogs don't live forever. We don't live forever. I think that's one of the hardest things about getting older is when you realize, like, what you know now is going to so drastically change soon or at some point. Um, and by the time that you kind of figure that out, it's too late. I don't know if that makes sense. It's like, it's kind of a sad thought, so I don't really want to get into it tonight because somebody also said in the comments, they're like, could you kind of let me know when you're going to talk about something because some nights I can't handle it, and I totally get that, right? But <clears throat> it's like, you know, when I was growing up, when I was even like, when I was in my, even like when I was in my 20s, you know, like the the same Christmas every year, the same Thanksgiving every year, you know, the hanging out with my mom, drinking coffee and smoking cigarettes and talking recovery and, you know, the, the road trips, you know, that just whatever, all the, oh, it's going to stop, hold on. Okay. All of the stuff that I took for granted, right? You know, that, oh God, we have to go to Christmas. It's the same every year, you know, all that kind of stuff. All of those like traditional rituals and things like that, that just became so... Like, they, I took them for granted and they seemed boring to me, right? Like, those are the things that I miss now in retrospect, but I can't ever have them again because the people that made those things possible are gone. And I don't know that I'm really at a point in my life where I want to continue to just relive memories over and over and over again. It's one thing for me to get on here and talk and tell memories and tell stories because that's kind of what this is a little bit. You know, it's kind of like a... I mean, to some degree, it's kind of like a Garrison Keillor, Lake Wobegon days, you know, me telling you stories about my growing up. And that's really what this channel is. Like, let me tell you my perspective about things and let me tell you stories about me growing up. And I think anybody that's watched this for a long time knows that. Um, but, and I love Garrison Keillor. We used to listen to Lake Wobegon days when I was a kid. But anyway, um, so, for me to even compare myself to him is kind of a joke. But you know what I mean. It's just kind of that. And, um, man, I'm glad I filled up my gas tank the other day. It literally shot up 35 cents, 265. It was 234 or something, 236. But anyway, you know, it's like, and then one day you realize, like, I miss those people and I miss the things we did and I miss, you know, just the silly things, you know, like going at outlet mall shopping with my mom, you know, or just driving in a car talking with her when she was driving me crazy because she wouldn't stop talking, you know, or, uh, you know, Thanksgiving at my aunt's house or, you know, or at Caroline's house or Thanksgiving or Christmas at my aunt's house when she would make everything so beautiful and, you know, and Easter at my aunt's house and, you know, every little thing that I miss now that I miss it now that I realize how important it was to me it's too late you know but I didn't realize that until it was too late and I can't do anything about it getting it back now so I just you know I the lesson from that is for me to live in the present and really appreciate things now it's like when I'm with Alex's family I really really try to appreciate it just went out of focus I really really try to appreciate every moment 
and um, okay, and the battery is dying, so I'm gonna have to pull in here somewhere anyway. But I really try to appreciate every moment, and um, you know, like with the kids getting older, it's like Carl Carlitos and Sebastian are getting older. You know, it's like um, just really trying to enjoy those moments. You know, of realizing that. You know, we were talking to Carlitos the other day about what he wants from Santa Claus. And I'm sitting there and I'm having a conversation with him. And he's so excited. And I was like, you know, like, have you been a good boy this year and whatever? And he was like, yeah. And I was like, because um, you know we can call Santa Claus. And he was like, oh, no, 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 no. He was like, he was like, you tell Santa Claus. Because there's like, I don't know how this got started. But there's some joke in the family that I... <laughs> have a direct line to Santa Claus. I don't know how it started, but I'm the one that has it. And Carlitos was like, can you please tell Santa Claus that I want a drone? He wants a drone for Christmas. He wants like one of those flying drones, you know? He was like, can you please tell Santa Claus? Can you call him and tell him that? And I go, well, have you not met Santa Claus this year yet? Liliana literally takes him to everything. They just went to a Christmas pageant parade the other day. And he goes, well, yeah, we've met, we've seen Santa a couple times. <laughs> So sweet. He thinks it's like the same Santa Claus every time. But anyway, he said, um, but yeah, he was like, but can you tell him too? Because I really, really want to drown. And I, I sat there and I, I looked at him. And it, in all honesty, in all the belief in the world, you know. And I thought it's a matter of time before this kid is like, that is just going to be gone. I don't know why that makes me like moved. But I thought this is just a matter of time before... There's no belief in Santa Claus, you know, like, are you kidding me? Like, that's gone, and then it's a joke, right? I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. I think it kind of makes me sad because I feel like they're, like, to some degree, like, they're my last chance at Santa Claus. Like, I don't know why. That, that sounds corny, but I mean, like, you know... Tanya's grown. Fufu's grown. I mean, unless Fufu, you know, has kids. Which I'm sure he will. But, um. I don't know. It's just like, stuff goes so fast. That woman was sitting in her car looking at me. I didn't even realize that she was sitting in her car. Yes, I'm vlogging. I know it's 6 a.m., but I'm not vlogging. And there's somebody sitting out here, too. This is weird. And somebody sitting in that car? This is like Night of the Comet. <laughs> it's kind of like, I'm not so sure what's going on. But... I don't know. I'm sure there's some of you out there that relate to what I'm saying. It's like, once you appreciate how how dear the, the small things are, you know, the fact that you turn on TV and Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer's on or, you know, Charlie Brown's Christmas. <laughs> you know, you turn it on and you realize, oh, uh, well, okay, so... I better watch it because Christmas is going to be over in two weeks. Do you know what I mean? Like, I mean, and that's a reality. Two weeks from today is my sobriety birthday. I got to tell my sponsor because she doesn't, we don't go to the same home group. Um, so she's going to have to come so she can give me my coin that night. But, um, yeah, I think it's hard. But I also, like, don't want to be in the sadness, if that makes sense. Like, I don't want to be, like, woe is me and life is short or, like, you know, life is just goes by in a blink and before you know it, it's over. Like, I don't want to think that way. You know, I say this a lot on my channel. If I could explain how I feel right now in my life, and this should be a real indicator of how blessed I feel and how much I love my life. Like, I really, truly, when I say this, this is no BS. Like, I have a life beyond my wildest dreams. In all honesty. Like, I don't need one more 
I'm not saying that there aren't things that I want, that there aren't like material items that I want, but there is nothing that I need. I have everything I need and and more. I have everything I need and more, you know, and um, I have great friends, I have a great husband, I have, a, you know, great dogs. I just, I, I love my life and I get to travel and I get to you guys and I get to make videos and I just have the most amazing life, right? And I think that this says it best is that I just wish I could stop time. Like, I just wish, like, right now could just be suspended in time forever. And that I could just keep on living this over and over and over. And, and that really says a lot about the condition of my life. I want for nothing right now. I feel very blessed at where I'm at in my life. I just wish time would stop. I don't want my dogs to get a day older. I don't want us to get a day older. You know, I don't... don't, you know? It's like I'm getting older. I have friends of mine that have some very serious health concerns, you know, and I worry about them, and I have friends of mine whose parents I worry about, you know, I worry about my own dad and stepmom. But at the same time, I know that I have to just continue to put one foot in front of the other and just live life, you know? And new ultimate steak on ultimate cheesy garlic bread Subway. I'd like to have the cheesy garlic bread, but I don't would like not to have the steak. Thank you very much. I'm a vegetarian. <laughs> Maybe that's where I've come full circle and just really realizing how, like, I, I think I said it for so long and then, then I really realized how really just grateful I am for my life and how much I love it, you know, and, um, and it never feels like there's enough hours in the day to do the things I want to do because I just kind of eat life up. I love that, you know. So, I don't know. But be, but knowing that I can't stop time, then that forces me to enjoy every little moment with my dogs and every moment with Alex and every moment with Tanya. Like, really enjoy it, you know? And um, try to make the most... You guys, this camera is dying too, or this battery is dying too, and I didn't realize it, so I'm gonna need to say goodnight. I thought I had another fully charged battery, but I guess I don't. I'm gonna start needing to make sure I have fully charged batteries every time I leave the house, but it's about, uh, it's about, um, about an hour, I think. So anyway, um, but just to wrap that up really, really quick, while I still have, you know, 10, 30 seconds or whatever. I'm just very grateful for my life and I try to practice that every day, you know, and, and living the best life that I possibly can. So anyway, I love you guys. I hope you're having an amazing, what is tomorrow, Wednesday. I hope you're having an amazing Wednesday. Moke the, moke. <laughs> Make the most of it. Do something that makes you really happy today. Do something that makes you proud when you look back on it years from now. You're exchanging a day of your life for it. Life is not a dress rehearsal. If nobody else told you this today, I love you. Make sure that you look at yourself in the mirror every single day and you do positive affirmations and you tell yourself, I love you. You are important. You are valuable. You matter. And today or tomorrow, which whenever you're watching this, is going to be a great day. I love you guys, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye. Love you!